There he is, folks. Oh my goodness. That's like setting it into a rock. Now, if y'all notice, the current's really ripping right here. And ripping hard. Ooh. Well, it's a good one. A little better than what I thought. This water is super, super cold. And these fish ain't going to be able to come out of the water a whole lot. He come out once, didn't he? I'm excited, folks. <sighs> There's nothing like smallmouth fishing. Y'all hear that line just... <laughs> He'll quit right here in a minute. We'll take a look at him. Golly. What a strong, strong fish. Golly. If he'll quit, we'll catch him. <laughs> Golly. Now, that's a beautiful fish right there. Look at the markings on this one. Quit. No, you don't do it. Okay. Look at the markings on that beautiful fish right there. Them old red eyes, just, he's mad. That fish is absolutely mad whoa the fish is mad he's very very mad all right folks that's the first one of the day or this evening that's a beautiful smallmouth bass and as you can see he eat that bait we're going to talk about the bait the water temperature and i'm going to tell you what it is cold out here but that is a beautiful little smallmouth. Let's get that fish back. Wow, that's a lot of fun, folks. I'll tell you what, that's a blessing to catch that fish that quick. Let's let her go right here. Over him. Look at that. Golly. Let's watch him right here. That's probably just a male fish right there. Where'd he go? I guess he's done gone. I don't see him no more. They're quick. A smallmouth bass is a very powerful fish. Let me just show y'all what I'm using today. I tell you, I'm excited. There's a lot of rocks right out here in front of me. They could be several fish held, uh, held on the down current side of these rocks. We're going to fish it real thoroughly before we move down, no doubt. All right, folks, I'm using right here a mud bug helgramite. It's three inches long, Miko helgramite. And as you notice, I don't have no weight in it. Uh, but do I? I do. I have a nail weight in it, which I'm going to show y'all at the end of the video how I put a nail weight in a Miko helgramite. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about Helgramites. I mean, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell y'all, I caught that fish right out in there. There's a lot of rocks out there. Now that current is ripping. And I've got a 1.5 gram tungsten nail weight in this bait. And it's just perfect because it's going just about the current speed and that's what I want. I'm just making a cast, letting it drift through those big rocks that's out there. On the down current side of those rocks is where those fish are held up or is where that fish was held up. When that helgramite went over the top of that rock, that, that smallmouth seen it on the down current side. It, in other words, the smallmouth was in behind the rock facing the current. And he reached out there and grabbed it as, as that bait washed out in front of his face. And that's what I'm trying to do right here. Just a natural way to present these fish with a natural offering. And as far as water temperature is concerned, I would think it's probably still in the 50s, probably low 50s. Very, very cold out here. But <clears throat> we'll fish around here. See, I'm just letting it drift. 
that's what a helgramite does when they move from rock to rock they just drift from rock to rock they get up under these rocks and around these rocks and these small mouth are accustomed to seeing them it's a perfect presentation for a small mouth but these baits right here the reason i like them folks another reason like fishing in current like this oh uh, is uh, for the simple reason you don't have to work the bait you can just let it hit the bottom and go down the current that's the natural look of a helgramite as it's hitting those rocks that bait's all it has got plenty of action see it's hitting small rocks big rocks um, it looks as alive as a is a a real helgramite is what I'm getting at. They don't move quick and they don't have a lot of action to them. They're actually a slow moving critter. So far, now I've been catching fish, field testing this, rigged this way. And I'm gonna tell y'all, I believe this is my favorite way to rig a Nico helgramite. I believe it is. I believe that's going to be the way I'm going to fish it most of the time. Okay, we're bit again. There he is. Oh my goodness. This is a small mouth. Golly. They are some fish in here. This is a big one. Let's see if I can keep up with him. I'm gonna take it easy with this fish because this is this is a big small mouth. So far I hadn't lost a fish yet, but let me hold him. He's up in them rocks right there. Let's hold him up. Hold my rod tip up. But I'm gonna say this is my favorite way. And I tell you what, I've never rigged one like this before, but I've used nail weights and a lot of different uh, plastics, okay? And it hit me. I think it was in January I thought about this. I said, you know what? Right in the middle of the winter. I said, this would be a great way to rig a Nico Helgramite. This is big bass. I'm just going to let him wear out because if I try to horse him, he's... I believe he could break my line. My, my, my. see the hook he's hooked good this is a big small mouth folks it's a blessing to be out here okay I'm going to try to get him this is a huge small mouth from a creek come on boy a girl this is a girl quit let me just get my hands on you. Let me get my hands on you. Okay. She's caught. That fish is bigger than I thought. This is a giant. This is a giant, folks. My, my goodness gracious. Oh. I don't know what to think about this. That right there is a big one. All right, folks. I'm gonna hold that big girl up right here. I'm not for sure that that's the best. That's the best that I can do right here. That's just a big small mouth right there. We'll turn around right here. Maybe you can <laughs> see her a little bit better. I don't have anywhere to set my camera. I'm having a lot of trouble right here. I kind of the, the sun's going in and out and all kinds of stuff is happening let's revive this fish that's a big small mouth that may be the biggest small mouth i've ever caught uh out of a river or or creek situation but let's look at there some of these rocks is huge and that's the ones that i'm targeting the bigger rocks 
we'll ease on out here just a little bit more. Make a long cast. Water's real clear. So that's one reason why I'm using a natural looking color, a mud bug. And Amico Helgramite also makes one that's called natural. Those two to me is definitely uh, a natural color as far as Helgramites goes here in our creeks and rivers here in this area. That and black or obsidian, that's, that's a great color. Uh, I have used the other colors that that's not so natural and even in it, but they work. So I really don't think it's the color as much as the, the shape of the bait and size of the bait. A three inch Helgramite, to be honest with y'all folks, and that's what this is, is a big Helgramite. I'm telling you, it's a big one. Mo a real, a big one in reality is around two and a half inches. I have seen them a little bigger than that, but three inches is a big old Helgramite. So they're not, <laughs> it's close enough to being realistic to these fish is what I'm saying. So I have a tremendous amount of confidence uh, using a bait of that size as far as Helgramite's concerned. I'm bouncing over those rocks just right. When I'm making contact one like that one, I just pick it up, let it flow over the top of it. And I expect that bait, that bite to be after it goes over the top of that rock. Golly, that's some good looking rocks right there. Good looking rocks. There's, there he is, folks. There he is. There he is. I get excited. Now, this is exciting. That's a smallmouth. That is so exciting. <clears throat> What's making it exciting is I've never fished this early before in this cold of a water. And... It's exciting. This is a good fish right here. Of course, smallmouth, they're all good. They're a powerful, powerful fish. These fish are real strong. Come here, boy. You're done. <laughs> Ain't that beautiful? I want y'all to take a look at that. That is beautiful. Look at there, what a fish. It's kindly shaded up under here, and I apologize for that, but nothing I can do about it. Look at there. Is that not just a beautiful, beautiful fish? My goodness. Here comes the sun. There we go. That's a lot better shot of that fish. Beautiful fish. Let's let him go. Golly, how beautiful. That fish took off like a rocket. The size hook that I'm using is a size one owner hook. And that's it. Nothing fancy. Just a finesseful way to catch these fish. Very finesseful. Now I'm using a six and a half foot sow belly rod, light action rod, with a Garcia Revo rocket. I mean, this thing has got uh, a real quick, quick gear ratio. I think it's seven and something. I don't know. It's real quick, folks. And that is 10 pound test braid, frost braid. And I'm using a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. I'm doing that account of the rocks. There's some big rocks in here. And they're serving a purpose right now. They're, this river is high right now. And the current 
is really ripping. And these fish, they have one chance. If they see it, see that bait wash by them, if they're hungry, they're just going to reach out there and grab it. A smallmouth bass can take cold water like on you know, these creeks and rivers a lot better. They're much more active than what you think they are oftentimes. It's just the matter of getting that bait to go over the top of their head just right. If it does, they'll reach out there and grab it. And I caught that fish right in the eddy. I mean, right directly behind that rock, folks. That's what I'm looking for. They don't want to fight this current all the time. They're going to get in behind them big boulders to get out of that current. Now, that's a fact. They're going to do that. There he is, folks. Golly. Almost in the same place that I caught that other one. Close. Now he's just running towards the bank right here. I can't really tell how big he is, not yet. Golly. What you gonna do? Oh my, 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 my. Y'all won't believe this. Y'all won't believe this. Well, y'all will, too. I want y'all to look what a rock bass. Okay, this is the biggest rock bass, if I land him, I have ever caught. This is it right here. That fish fought, too. Oh, my. I want y'all to look at that. That is huge. That is super huge. But y'all look, y'all can see it compared to my reel. That is a big, huge, I can't get over that. Folks, that's just about a, as good a shot as I can give y'all. It's very dark up under here. There comes a little bit of sun right there. But that is a good rock bass. I've never caught one that big. Let's let him go. following can y'all see him right there that water's clear but it's not as clear as it normally is because of all the rain we've had it was probably a couple days ago it was probably muddy to be honest with y'all but uh this bait right here are helgramites <laughs> i'm gonna tell you they're truly productive not just in the springtime, summer, and fall. I mean, <clears throat> it is springtime right now, but it's sort of winter-type conditions. I mean, it is cold out here. And it's been this way for about three days. It's been a heck of a cold front. But uh, what I'm saying is, it'll catch them. Ooh, Ooh wee, that's a big hole. Make a long cast. There's some fish right out in there. I've... Look here. Golly. Golly. No sooner than it hit, one had it. That's a good small mouth. Y'all seeing this? I was fixing to say there's some fish out there in front of us. Got them pinpointed, no doubt. Golly. That bait hit that fish right in the head. Powerful, powerful fish. Yeah, that's a good one. Golly. There's some fish right there in front of us. I knew that wasn't no rock bass. That fish right there has got some power, folks. That is a good one. My, my, my. I'm gonna tell y'all something, I'm having some fun. We just have got through looking at that rock bass. Let's look at this small mouth. They wouldn't no need for me to wait around to set the hook for this fish. 
I could tell it was a good one when he hit it. Now, would you quit? Let's take a good look at him right there, folks. That is a good one. I mean, look at there. That's a big small mouth. Or it is for me when it comes to these creeks like this. That's a good one, folks. Let's let her go. There she goes. Hey. A lot of people don't understand how. Uh, ooh, I'm about. I'm, I'm, the drillaging. The drillaging is getting very, very bad. And I can't help it. When I get this. Hey, ma'am, when I get this a drillaging. I turn animal lispit. Lispit. Y'all know what I'm saying. Let's catch another. You know, folks, I get excited about fishing. That's a fact. And January, right in the middle of the winter, I come up with this. I started thinking about nail weights. And so I rigged the bait up just like I envisioned, tested it. Field tested, that's what I call it, and caught a lot of fish on it before I shot this video. Um, the area that I fished in is an area that I knew fish conjugated, a uh, smallmouth. Uh, I fished there before, so it was just actually just a test. And I'm tickled to death about it. But I'm going to show you the difference between a Miko Pilgrimite right here. Let me lay this down. And just uh, a Helgramite that's conventional plastic. This is the Nico, and that's a color I don't particularly like. It's called, uh, I don't know, 571 is the name of the color. Limited edition. This is the one that I test on when I come, come up with ideals like this. But here is a conventional, just a Helgramite. Um, made out of regular plastic just like uh, any other plastic watch this okay you see that it breaks without any trouble now Nico Helgramite is rubber look at this you see this this thing right here is nothing but rubber and to insert a male weight into it by pushing it in like you would a conventional plastic lure is impossible. I even tried a drill bit, a one eighth of an inch drill bit and I failed. So I'm gonna show you how to create a path so you can go ahead and push that nail weight in there. And I'm gonna show you something about tungsten that you probably didn't know when it comes to the nail to the nail weights. Okay, I want that nail weight to be tight, so I'm just using a needle. All I need is a path, a pathway. So I'm going to heat this needle up real hot, and it won't take it long. Okay. Just like that. I just need a path. Rubber and, and plastic are two different things, let me tell you. Nico Helgramite products is different than Elastec. It's, it's more rubber than Elastec. So, heat it up like that. And right here, right there, stick it in. See how easy that slid in there? Now, I'm probably about a half of an inch or more in there. Sort of water it like that and then pull it out. Now let me show you how to install the weight. Okay, these are the weights that I use. This is a Mustad tungsten weight. Right here, you can see them. They come loose, so I put them in this, this container. Uh, they're 1.5 gram weights, which is equivalent to 1 16th of an ounce. Now this is what you do. Here's the weight right here. It's 1 16th of an ounce. Okay, tungsten weight. Now, what we're going to do is push it in here, just like that. See, I've got it, got it, I got it burned out to where we can 
twist it in there and push it on in there. But I wanted, in this situation, I wanted a little bit lighter of a weight. I wanted about one gram instead of 1.5. So I wanted to reduce the length of this weight so it wouldn't interfere with the hook. So I'm going to show you how to cut tungsten. I know that sounds funny, but you can do it. Tungsten is a hard metal. Any hard metal can be separated, but you have to do it by scoring the metal. So I'm going to hold it like that, take these side cutters, and I want this section off, that section off. So what I'm going to do is put some power into that. What I done was scored. I scored it. This is called scoring. Hard metals will separate, will pop. <clears throat> Did you hear that? Now that come off like a one pump daisy BB gun. When you do that, I didn't cut it, I scored it. Now we have about a one gram weight right there. And that's what I want. So we have tracked it out. I'm losing daylight. I hope y'all can see me. So what I'm going to do is push it in there. Push it in there. All right, folks, I'm losing daylight. So anyway, here's one that's already got the, the weight in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. I've done pushed it in there. Once you push it all the way up in there, take a little bit of glue, super glue, and put a drop right there where the hole is that you burn in there and hold it down just a little bit. That'll keep that uh, friction from, from letting that weight come out because it's rubber. It's got a clamp on it. So, okay. Now I'm rigging one of these. This is a size number one off owner hook, wide gap hook. What I do is barely, barely go in there about an eighth of an inch okay and I'm going to show you why explain to you why you can get by with this because it's rubber I want that eyelid exposed uh, the reason for that is it keeps tension off of this offset right here off of this Z bend keeps tension off of it so once you gauge it and run that hook all the way through okay it keeps tension off of the Z bend, so it will allow that hook to pivot, and you'll get a better hook set. Okay, and I leave the hook exposed just like that. Now the advantage to this is that this bait, you know, this bait is very buoyant. Um, it's actually a great Ned rig bait that will stand up. If you had a, a bullet weight here on the very end of it, that's what it would do every time. You would move it. It would fold and it would stand immediately straight up. Or if you had a jig head in it, it would do the same thing. But being the weight is right here, once this bait hits the bottom, it's going to sit up at a 45 degree angle. And boy, that looks natural. Very natural. I'm getting, I'm catching a lot of fish because of that. It's not standing up. Hevermites don't stand up. They're, they're either flat on the bottom or they're at an angle. Okay, that's just a fact about it. Now, another thing is because you don't have a, a jig head right here or a bullet weight on the end, it don't wedge between rocks. It'll go through those rocks without getting hung up a lot better. I'm telling you, this is the proper way, in my opinion, or go, is going to be my favorite way to fish with a Nico Helgramite. All right, folks, we're losing daylight. I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments. Thank y'all very much for putting up with Richard Gene, the fishing machine. I love each and every one of you. Hey. And to remember, go fishing when you can, because it's good for you.